So Gerald, could you describe for us the difference in uh, moisture movement and root growth in conventional versus biologically active soils? Okay, thanks for that question. To answer that question, I'm going to draw a diagram here that is going to become a little complex, but as I go through that, hopefully you'll be able to understand what's involved. So if we diagram, diagram the topsoil as this layer, typically what you find in conventional soils, you find a layer below the topsoil, which we refer to as hardpan. Now a hardpan is a, is a layer of soil where the soil particles are very closely adhered to each other and they're, they're very, and, and there's minimal, if any, airspace. So it's a, it's a very dense layer of soil and it is impervious to both the movement of water and impervious to the diffusion of oxygen. So what you typically have in this layer is you have anaerobic conditions. Now, when organic material from previous crops decompose under anaerobic conditions, you end up producing alcohol and formaldehyde, which are both toxic to root growth. So typically what happens in a conventional soil like this, you have a plant growing, growing at the top and it is sending roots down. But when the roots sense that there's alcohol and formaldehyde in this hard pan layer, they try to avoid it, so they steer in, in a different direction and they tend to grow laterally versus down further. So that's one important characteristic. When you have a hard pan, you will by definition get shallow rooting because the roots try to avoid the alcohol and formaldehyde in this area. The second thing that happens in soils with a hard pan is that the hard pan layer does not allow proper diffusion of water. When you get a heavy rain event, which I'll diagram like this, the water tends to saturate this topsoil area. It tends to fill up the, the uh, pore space between the soil particles with water and it, and it cannot penetrate this hard pan layer. So once this is saturated, then the water moves in a horizontal pattern, which contributes to soil erosion. The third factor that I want to point out is that is a little more complex, but it's very interesting. And it relates to the gravitational attraction between the moon and the earth. Now, the gravitational attraction between the moon and the earth is what causes tides to move. It's, it causes the tides in the ocean. So we're in central Manitoba, Canada here where there's no ocean for quite some distance, but there is groundwater. There is groundwater in the subsoil. And what happens is when the moon is up in the, sk up in the sky at night, there's a gravitational attraction that pulls groundwater up. But if this hard pan exists, the groundwater hits this hard pan and it cannot go through it. So we're in a situation where the roots are shallow, the hard pan exists, groundwater can't be pulled up, so agricultural soils that, that are managed conventionally and have a hard pan typically are very, very dependent on either regular irrigation or regular rainfall because there's no buffer in the system. Now what happens in a, in a well in a well managed biological soil or a, or a soil where there is active biological activity is this hard pan is is not as dense in fact this area below the tillage layer I'll diagram it like this it's an area where the soil particles do not adhere as tightly together and as a result there is some airspace so when you have when you have a plant growing in this area, um, this, this topsoil layer, as a result of the biological activity, has active humus. And humus causes the soil to granulate. It's what, it's what creates this breakage in the hard pan. It causes soil to aggregate. And when that happens, then roots are able to penetrate much deeper through this soil. The other thing that happens is 
This humus layer is charged in such a way that it, it, it can attract and it can hold water. Water is a dipolar molecule. There's, there's two hydrogen atoms and there's an oxygen atom. And the hydrogens are positively charged and the oxygen atom is, is negatively charged. So what happens is this is a dipolar molecule. You end up, it ends up being net positive on this side and it ends up being net negative on this side. So if you've got negative charges in your humus layer, they can, they can attract this positive and hold the water. So here's what happens in a biologically active soil. At night when the moon is up in the air, the groundwater is, a, is, is attracted and it moves by this gravitational attraction. But it moves not only up to where the hard pan used to be, it moves through this hard pan layer and up into this humus layer. Now you've got a rich, you've got a rich layer of soil that is holding adequate moisture during the day and it is also, it is also well accessed by plant roots so your plant can grow. During the light reactions of photosynthesis during the day, water from the earth is required as is carbon dioxide from the air for photosynthesis to go. So, so this is very, very important in a biologically active soil where this humus layer has been formed and where the, where the soil is adequately aggregated and roots are deeper, this, this contributes a great deal of moisture that is not accessible in this area. Another, another situation where this becomes very important is in the heavy rain event. Now in this soil, when there is a heavy rain event, the water does not saturate this topsoil. In fact, the water wets it, it re-wets it, but then it percolates through what used to be the hard pan layer and travels all the way down to recharge, recharge the groundwater layer. So you can see that this system has a biological buffer built into it. When it's too dry, it can attract moisture up and hold the moisture for plant growth. When it's too wet, when there's excessive moisture, it can, it can allow moisture to wet the topsoil and then travel down and rebuild the subsoil. So there's, so there's a minimization of horizontal water movement, there's a minimization of erosion, and there's, a, there's an adequate supply of water regardless of whether the situation is, is, whether the climate is delivering too much or too little rainfall. Whereas this, this conventionally managed soil that has a hard pan is typically, it typically lacks that buffer. It's prone to erosion, it's prone to dry conditions, even though there is water in the groundwater, and uh, it is not buffered in any way. So I hope that gives you some insights into the differences in water movement and hydrology in a well-managed biological soil as compared to a typical conventional soil. Thank you, Charles.